Good afternoon and welcome back to Laurel Park. Thank you for joining us on this Friday afternoon. On today at the races, I am Gabby Gaudette, joined by Dave Rodman, and it's a glorious day for some lovely racing throughout the weekend. Yep, pretty much the same weather, I think, for the entire weekend. Mm -hmm. Fast, firm, a lot of sunshine. Turf should be back in super shape here after a few days off. And a uh, nice 10 race card today. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, some interesting young horses running really throughout the weekend. We've got some yep. first time starters that are gonna show some promise. And we said goodbye to one of our old timers though uh, this past week. We did. Uh, goodbye to Laurel and happy retirement to Ben's cat. I know, it was just a couple days ago that he loaded on the van at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> Avon uh, loaded him onto the van, uh, ben talking about Ben's cat. And uh, we've seen pictures, we've seen video from him since in Versailles, Kentucky, and he looks like a pretty happy camper. Yeah, outstanding uh, it's a career, Ben's cat. If you go to Jim Dunleavy's column in mm -hmm. Daily Racing Form, he did a good job of covering that retirement. Uh, and also the PPs are up there. When you look at his PPs, his body of work, it's really astonishing. He gave us, what, eight? Eight years of thrills. Eight seasons, yeah. 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 I can remember yeah. when eight he first seasons. started, uh -huh. Dave, w his first start, I w hadn't even graduated high school yet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. I mean, th that's pretty incredible. Yeah. And eight seasons of raising for Ben's Cat. And it, a lot of people don't realize this, but he won going long. He won on the turf. He won on the dirt. He won on an off track. I mean, you could throw this horse on glass and he'd still win he's yeah. so incredible yeah, right and uh and he did create a lot of fans to come out to see him you mm -hmm. know very few horses get a fan base like that you know yeah. extra heat i think uh probably before him was one of them mm -hmm. ben's cat and who knows who the next ben's cat or extra heat will be let's uh hope yeah. we get to that pretty shortly but talking about getting to things let's get to avon thorpe of course avon is the assistant to king t leatherberry and he just i uh, caught up with him yesterday morning just about some reflection on ben's cat the best part of ben is he do his own thing like when he come back after he done cooling out he will drag you to the grass he would just straight drag you to the grass. Ain't nothing you could do about it. He just walk in and go eat him some grass. And it was every day. If he if he go out there and breeze, he'll walk a good 20, 25 minutes. And when he's done just cooling off, he he lets you know. He take you right out. And it's no stopping him. And I just let him do what he want anyway. So, but when he regular go out there, regular jog or gallop. He'll walk like five, ten minutes, and he's like, "I'm going to the, I'm going to the grass." And I'm like, "Ben, not yet, not yet." And he dragged me out there anyway, and I said, "All right, let's go." And then he'll spend his time on the grass. I'm a, I'm gonna miss grazing him every day. Uh, yeah. Well, he's a special horse with a mind of his own, and de deservedly so. Uh, we'll definitely miss him, Avon. Thank you. Thank you for interview, but you know, we all gonna miss him. Trust me. There's a lot of people going to miss Ben. I'm going to miss Ben. You're going to yep. miss Ben. The whole state of Maryland is going to miss Ben. The whole East Coast and uh, racing world will miss Ben's cat. But, you know, happy that he gets to enjoy retirement. He retired on a good note. He's sound. He's happy. And Avon actually saying, you know, sometimes when a big horse like that leaves the barn, they leave the stall open for a couple of days. Avon and his longtime groom, uh, Fern, Augusti, said, we had to throw another horse in there because every time we passed that empty stall, we started to yeah. tear up. A so. little crying going on there, yeah. right? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, broke his maiden for $20,000. It was May 8, 2010. He's looking at his lifetime PPs. Won his first eight, I think, in a row. Mm -hmm. And eventually 32 of 63, 21 on the turf. And uh, quite a record, uh, no matter what distance, really, like you said, anywhere. Turf, dirt, long, and short. With, of course, his most recent race, his last race being against Flash Phelps, but only beaten four lengths. That's incredible to me. And good. Yeah. Good thing that uh, good thing King took him out of those claiming races, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, from the get go. Yeah. No, but uh, it took him a while to finally get to the races. I believe it was four when he made his first uh, career start with injury. He had a mm -hmm. couple of right. injuries. Pelvis uh, is a pelvis yep. issue, mm -hmm. right? So that was the reason he was in for twenty. You know, nobody nobody took him, but uh, 
you know. There's a few trainers who may have been thinking about it at the time, have a few regrets. But uh, happy retirement to Ben's cat. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's got a new partner. Um, mm -hmm. Some uh, pictures have come out. He's already out in the field munching on some grass. He's found a new running mate. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, next time I'm in Versailles, Kentucky, I'm going to pay old Ben's cat a visit. But happy retirement to Ben's cat. And uh, really, congratulations to King Leatherberry, the entire uh, operation for giving us this joy of following Ben's cat um, throughout his career. But we'll shift gears and talk about some things that are quickly coming up. And the All-American Challenge is shortly coming up. Again, uh, you have to be a premier player. Go up to guest services booth and become a premier player. It's very cheap but you can and very easy. You can celebrate Independence Day with an exciting handicapping tournament and a guaranteed $500 prize place a two dollar mythical win place wager on the final five live races at laurel park that day it's twenty dollars per entry we also have the crab feast coming up this is a very popular event that's going to be happening sunday july 30th that takes place from 1 to 5 p.m on the grandstand apron what's better than steamed crabs cold beer and live racing <laughs> uh, yeah plus uh, some fried chicken pulled pork mac and cheese corn on the cob collard greens potato salad you like gotta stop right there because you're me hungry. Grandpa, sound like Grandpa. <laughs> what's his name on Hee Haw? <laughs> <laughs> There's also <laughs> live racing and a DJ, so uh, you can come out here. You can call the number on the screen for tickets. You can find out more information at laurelpark.com as well. So that's something to look forward to. Cornbread, corn assorted fried, <laughs> assorted <laughs> cakes. I don't even know. I'm I don't even that's know. The entire that's nearly not the entire menu. For 60 bucks, it's really w well worth it oh July yeah. 30th. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, uh, we'll get to mm -hmm. what's happening today. No carryover in the late pick five, but we do have a rolling super high five carryover. Over. That takes place in the second race with one scratch out of the first. So race two kicks off that carryover, $5,800. We also have a small rainbow six carryover that was taken down last Saturday, just a carryover of $747. But we've got 10 races on tap. We've got a bevy of turf races, too. And look at how beautiful mm. that turf course is here today. We are fast and firm. Going to be getting into the high 80s, I believe even maybe low 90s. But it's supposed to be a very pleasant sunny enjoyable day on the all along and on the dahlia turf course the all along with that zero setting the rail there on the inside the dahlia turf course with the rail at uh, 52 feet yeah gabby the winds out of the south southwest about 15 mile an hour kind of a breeze kicking up to 15 mm -hmm. uh throughout the afternoon i feel it right now so it's very pleasant outside for kind of a humidish day mm -hmm. that's the beauty about this set here by the paddock is mm -hmm. we always get a nice an, a nice breeze coming through. Good move. Let's get <laughs> <laughs> let's get to today's opener once again. Race one does kick off that early pick five, but super high five wagering won't start into until today's second race. This is a maiden twenty five thousand dollar event. Five furlongs onto the main track. Dave scratch the two laces lace in here. And I had a little bit of a tough time with this race in terms of maybe constructing that pick early pick five ticket because I thought it was difficult to find a single. So I did construct a late uh, early pick four ticket. But, I mean, you, you got to think that the four deep red is going to be uh, tough to beat in here at 8 to 5 on the morning line, getting blinkers on for the first time. But these two-year-olds can be a little bit unreliable. Yeah, even with a small field, you know, there's some angles here, blinkers on the four deep red, a couple of first-time starters thrown in. So your confidence level probably not going to be that high mm -hmm. to maybe single a horse in here yet deep red is by algorithms outstanding second crop sire and a sire of recruiting ready mm -hmm. so it could and be and he hate me and he hate me that's mm -hmm. right the other uh, three standout foals according to daily racing form trying to think of the other one off off top of my head i probably should know blinkers on though <laughs> and a little bit of a troubled start in debut mm -hmm. yes i think that this is a filly that you must use um but also the five little storming this was an interesting horse in debut because she actually didn't get off to a good start whatsoever she hesitated in the gate you can't afford to do that at five furlongs for a first time starter but i was intrigued by her enough to pick her on top because of the money that re she received for a first time starter for John jonathan maldonado um, two-year-old so he does good work with his two-year-olds little limited sample size but I think I think that she definitely has room to improve with one race under her belt and hopefully a better start
of our owner breeder, Barack Farm, Marilyn Bread, and he or she who hesitates at five furlongs off and up against it, that's for sure, mm -hmm. and that she did, but only beaten four lengths, finished off a little bit of interest there. New game today, perhaps even consider her a first-time starter, uh, and she's getting some early play, eight to five morning line, and uh, holding three to two now early with a just a few bucks in the pool, and she's probably going to be favored in this spot. Yeah, I think Deep Red's one to use, Little Stormin's one to use. I even kind of like the seven, his robes for mine, um, just because the rate that Hugh McMahon, Katie Davis, uh, these connections have just been uh, red hot recently. Even Hugh McMahon with his two-year-olds, he mm. he's been doing um, fantastic work. So I'm just, I don't necessarily trust the three Simonella in here because I think she's going to be decently bet. Uh, okay race two starts back, but I thought that she was just kind of second by default. Yeah, good effort in the mud against Sammy B. Cool, finishing off on the rail, closing, galloping out strongly. But, uh, you know, she, she just kind of ran even behind Romia. Uh, that, uh, I think that was her entry mate, actually, mm -hmm. who, who won yeah. that race second time out. But maybe another excuse she had on the sloppy track uh, last time out and didn't like the particular kind of slop and that track at Delaware back home to uh, home ground here at Laurel. A little storm in your, your top pick eventually here, Gabby, the Maldonado barn. He's got a, a couple of nice uh, two-year-old runners that have paid decent money, 27 to one. Superman at Delaware Park <laughs> uh, boosted the ROI for the Maldonado barn with the youngsters. Exactly. Well, that is a tricky race to start things off. We'll turn the page to the second race, a $5,000 claiming event for three-year-olds and upward, which have not won a race since December 30th. We go six furlongs on the main track. This does kick off that early pick four, and it does start the rolling super high five. We'll show you that carryover in the rolling super high five. That carryover is just over $5,800, so definitely dive into that. This will be a heavily played bet. And we'll take a look at my early pick four ticket. We're going to be using three horses to start things off with the one, six, eight, followed by three, eight, followed by three, four, five, followed by three, four, six. So a cheap, affordable ticket for $27. I love the third race today, and I have a pretty strong opinion about it. Really like shortlist in there, the number eight, but I think you probably should use the three surprise twist in there. So that's where you can kind of limit your bankroll, I thought, in the third race. I think that race will be pretty formful. So that's how that's my approach on the early pick four. I wanted to have at least three horses in this uh, first leg of the sequence to kick things off. You think I have the right three, maybe? Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. And, uh, you know, we'll get the short list in a moment. But there's good reason to like her, not only with the blinkers, but out of a nice key race, a couple of races back uh, as as well here. Mm -hmm. But so you're you're going with the six here, fifth business. And, Gabby, I don't blame you. Hot barn and Jason Egan, that barn's really been on a roll here in Maryland. This is only the third start in the cycle for the new barn here for fifth uh, business as business is really picking up for Jason uh, and he's got a few few uh, horses for some different owners now and M&D mm -hmm. stables gone to him and uh, and here's just a kind of a low-level claimer for KCK Racing uh, and the partners. Yeah I think this horse could definitely win five to two on the morning line but uh, took this horse out of open competition two starts back put him in for that beaten nickel last time out and it was a much improved performance i can foresee him even taking one more step forward third start off the layoff he's tactical he's not really reliant on the pace we have pace in here coming from perhaps the four twisted earl uh the one fairy cat i like i just thought that the rail really cost him last time out and unfortunately he's stuck in the same position here today yeah, he's got the, the rail again uh it can may, may work against him this afternoon uh, but he did run against a slow pace there back at Pimlico, three races back. DNA approved, got out there in 24, had something mm -hmm. left. And, and uh, you know, rubber stamped by the fact that a couple of horses have come out of that race to win. Horses were kind of up against the slow pace likes uh, with the likes of Fairy Cat, who's more of a kind of a mid-level, mid-pack kind of mm -hmm. closer and needs a little more pace to, to kick into. Old class horse here, it's a bang, at least against this group, in my opinion. I think he's run against some decent horses in his back uh, in his back form, like oh Ganador yeah. 
uh, Kali Francois back in town. Good to see Kali back in town from Florida, trying to get uh, a win, uh, something in the win column and get something going and riding up at Delaware and here working hard to do that. And maybe today's the day for It's a Bang, a three-time winner at Laurel. I could see him just popping up with a, a good performance, whether or not that's a winning performance. He's just, uh, he's had a lot of starts since his last victory and his last win was at Timonium and I thought a pretty easy field that day. And this isn't necessarily that easy of a field, but like you said, he's got back class at one point. He used to love <laughs> running here at Laurel. So I thought maybe one to throw into that early pick four. We'll take a look at the third race. This is a maiden special weight, as Dave alluded to at the top of the show. We are on the All Along and the Dahlia. Race three is on the All Along, a mile and a 16th. And uh, we'll talk about, actually, the eight short list. And this, is, this horse is actually seven to two, so I believe second choice on the morning line. We'll take a look at this horse's performance. Two starts back behind Cheyenne's Colonel. I thought this was very good because... This was a tough field. I think Cheyenne's Colonel is a very good horse for Sammy Davis, and he finished up with very good energy. I think turf is definitely his preferred surface, and I don't mind this race whatsoever, even though he didn't win. That was his last start on the turf. He ran a third in a race taken off the turf onto a sloppy track last time out. As I mentioned a few moments ago, Gabby, uh, a key race. Two horses have come out of there to win. Just Howard, third-place finisher, and uh, Croce de Oro, who didn't show much speed that particular day, was back on game with a game victory in his next out uh, to break Maiden. So big number, back on the turf, and the blinkers will go on today for Ann Merriman. And we'll see other horses who will potentially take money. One of them is the three surprise twist, first time or second time starter for Arno Delacour. Last time out was his first start. And I will say, if you go back and watch the replay, he was about five, maybe six <laughs> wide yep. throughout. Uh, and that's obviously an issue because Just Howard, the winner of the race, he was wide early, but then he managed to save ground. He hugged the rail coming up the stretch, and that gave him the advantage. And you can pose that excuse for this horse surprise twist that he was wide throughout. He didn't really have much punch late. I just didn't like how he finished up. It yeah. looked like he was heading backwards. He might have come up a little bit short yeah. because uh, he was going pretty well. I know even though he was wide, he was kind of racing well with himself down the back stretch. Um, so that's a tough call there for surprise twist. The runner-up came back to win mm -hmm. uh, in a race that was off the turf. Um, four horse in a full horse Delaware. field. <laughs> yeah, in a full horse field at Delaware. So That's what I'm saying. I think the race that yeah. uh, that uh, shortlist short comes out of, uh -huh. it was much tougher than what he comes right, out of. Right, already two winners and two good winners out of there. Just Howard to beat Surprise Twist and Croce Dora out of the shortlist race. Now we have a new shooter in here, and that's the five captain hardship for trainer Graham Motion by Lonro out of a mare who actually ran at Delaware. Mm. I was looking up the pedigree, but wow. this horse is kin to multiple turf winners, including multiple stakes winner and graded stakes place King Kongi. Uh, the turf form is there overseas. Graham Motion, he does well with this type of move, uh, with bringing horses uh, to North America for the first time. So you have confidence with that. I just think this horse might be a little bit over bet, maybe. I, I, I like shortlist in the race that he comes out of. I'm not knocking this horse. Mm -hmm. He could definitely win. I just prefer shor shortlist. Well, you've got two horses in his running lines that are going to get attention. Lancaster Bomber, Yucatan, mm -hmm. only a couple of lengths behind there. Gets Lasix for the debut. I don't know. I'm partial to Lawn Rose. Seems to me they, they kind of run on anything, on turf mm -hmm. and, and on I dirt. I love Lawn Rose. Yeah. So right away, I mean, to me, he's kind of a use. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're right. He's probably going to get a lot of play because of the fact it's a motion barn. Exactly. And as you said, Lancaster Bomber in the running line, some mm -hmm. quality horses that he's been facing overseas. We'll take a look at the fourth race. This is a maiden $10,000 event, one turn mile on the main track and a key scratch of the two sheet lightning in here. That was my top selection. So I actually defaulted to the four Fergie's lady for Claudio Gonzalez. And if you look at stats for Claudio going from turf to dirt, sprints to routes, He's three for nine, four for nine, finishing the money. So in the past, although a small sample size, it, it's been successful. However, <laughs> this horse has never really run a uh, good enough race on the oh. dirt to, to warrant confidence. It's going to be a one-way street for her. I mean, yeah. look at the form. There's not any speed in the race. She is she just speed. tactical advantage right? here, yeah. Unless she stumbles at the start or something unforeseen happens. Mm -hmm. I mean, she has the definite tactical advantage, but for how far is the question, you exactly. know? She's never been a mile on the main track, but uh, she's flashed speed on the turf and on the dirt, and good speed, too. 
I mean, I, I thought maybe she came up a little short in that race off the layoff first off. The claim for Claudio was waiting for her to get back on the turf, and she did last time out. And I was a little disappointed that uh, she didn't kick on a little farther mm -hmm. against Riley. Yes, yeah, so I know she dueled for the lead, but she's going to wind up on the lead today. Oh, she's definitely getting the lead, like you said. How far, though? I mean, she could be moiling home down the stretch, getting to that second wire finish, and someone just comes up and gets her straight at the wire. And some of those yeah. closers could potentially be the three, page two, or the five, Little Miss JoJo. I thought that Little Miss JoJo definitely looked like, at least analyzing her last race, that she should be okay handling more distance. I'll give you 100% on that. These two fillies look like they maybe they just want to go a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. And that last eighth of a mile to the second wire run will take its toll on Fergie's lady uh, page two and little Miss Jojo their users and I didn't even think the nine undaunted spirit was impossible she's actually been okay and had experience going longer so maybe just throw her into the, some of those multi-race bets at a good price that's races one through four we will step aside momentarily or shortly and we will come back talking about the 20 cent rainbow six we have a small carryover and I provide a ticket right after this the best bets at Laurel Park are the pick fives, and we have two of them. The early pick five starts in race one and is a mandatory payout. The late pick five is the last five races of the day and has carryover potential. Both pick fives at Laurel Park have an industry low 12% takeout. The pick fives at Laurel Park, your best bet. Welcome back to Laurel Park. Now uh, taking a look at the 20 cent rainbow pick six. We've got a carryover today of $747. And we started off on the Dahlia rail setting at 52 feet at five and a half furlongs for the 16,000 non winners of two lifetime claiming event. And we will take a look at my 20 cent rainbow six ticket. And I do have a single today and that is in the seventh race going to be singling a 15 to 1 shot. How about that? I don't think she's going to be 15 to 1, but we'll get to that in a moment. She's, she's like the she Michael Dickinson. Michael Dickinson. Okay. There we go. She's like the wind. So we'll see what happens. I know it's a very bold single, but I had a tough I'm surely not going to single in races 8 and 9, and definitely not this race or the next race. So, uh, you know, we'll see how this goes. If you can afford to throw a couple more uh, runners into the seventh race will give you some alternative options, but for now it's a fifty-seven dollar and sixty cent ticket. Let's hope we get uh, through it. it. It's as good as anything. I mean, if I had to make a ticket, I don't think I could find a single. So yeah. <laughs> good for you, you. You got one. You need to because I think yeah. some legs you must use at least four horses in. So. Mm -hmm. We'll get through it, and race five, like I said, we start things off on the Dahlia. This is a turf sprint race, and we'll go back and take a look at a video spotlight replay that two horses both come out of Tiger's Bop and Spin Move. Focus on the six Tiger's Bop here, and his speed is his best attribute, and you can see him coming out of the gate. He stumbles pretty badly, takes him a while to recover. He's rushed a bit trying to get to the lead where he is best. I thought that was the only option that Xavier Perez had to do. He just took a little bit of wind out of his sails coming down the stretch. He faded to finish third. Now, spin move in here, I thought he ran okay uh, considering that he had – an ideal trip. There was nothing that worked against him. He was tactically placed okay for his turf debut. But the reason why I picked spin move out of this race, although I thought Tiger's Bob had more of an excuse, is because there's other speed in here that I think might be a thorn in the side of Tiger's Bob. Speed like party region. Yep. You know, from the Corrales Barn, the horse you've got there on the board, the six uh, from the Corrales Barn, who, you know, is kind of an interesting, intriguing horse. Uh, there could be other speed. But, you know, he's kind of a horse that could improve and move forward here, only his third time on the turf, whereas Tiger's Bop, you know, has been on the turf eight times yeah. uh, with one win. So of your top three picks, Party Regent was kind of an intriguing. Um, his turf debut on April 23rd here at Laurel for Maiden 20. Um, it's produced a winner, I Love You Much, mm -hmm. uh, one for Maiden 25. Ran a pretty good 81 buyer figure as well. Um, does anybody here have anything near an 81? No. Mm, no. Not really. <laughs> I don't think so. Not really. Not that he's going to run as well as Love You Much did, but, again, he's he's kind of a more lightly raced turf runner mm -hmm. uh, against uh, against this group of non-winners of two. So using all of the three, four, and six in there. And wanted to quickly mention a horse I didn't use in my top four, but if you want to throw in a shot here, 
it's either feast or famine, This the 11 good genes uh, for Kenny Decker. This horse is by Awesome, of course. Sometimes we see that they can turf. He's about 9 or 10%, not that high, but some of them have been winning. And he's actually a full brother to Awesome Feather, who's Breeders' Cup juvenile filly winner. So um, a lovely pedigree to showcase. He's never tried the turf before, so maybe another one. I mean, he, he was running okay races against tougher company um, in the past, so feast or famine for a horse like this, but you'll probably get 10 or 12 or 1 on him. Well, you know, I mean, he's in for the 16 today, but uh, he's still a colt, so they're not giving up much there mm -hmm. on, on good genes. Third time blinkers for him. Yeah, he might be the turnaround kind of horse with a new surface uh, underneath his hooves. Now that I mention it, it's a apply, he's aptly named. Good genes. Good genes. Yeah. Hopefully good genes That's for the funny. grass. I click. Uh, the light bulb just uh, clicked uh, on. Sorry. I mean, me yeah. I yeah. mean, speaking in the speed, you know, you've got the nine in your mix. Let me see. He's mm -hmm. got lace and he's got blinkers and he's at early speed before. Kitchen sink. <laughs> so uh, there could be potentially a uh, three-way go for the lead in the spot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could set up for my top selection in there. Spin move as well. We'll get to the sixth race starting off the late pick five, $5,000 uh, beat nickel going the one-turn mile. And I land on the one strike and spare for trainer Ann Merriman. Now, he's not that fast, and I, I will definitely say that. He uh, doesn't have a lot of gait speed. He's kind of dependent on the pace. But... I think he should be able to save some ground from the rail post position. He has a little bit longer to get to that finish line with a one-turn mile second wire finish. And there are some suspect speed in here. So I like him best, but I'm not fully confident with him. Well, last time he won here at Laurel, it looked like it was a good pace at 23-246 and 4 for the half. In a condition claiming race, he came rolling under Trevor at 11-1 to for an upset. And that was mm -hmm. his one of six wins uh, total he's had over this track. So, yeah, I mean, he, he's a turnaround candidate on the fact that he likes this, cl this track and if he gets a good pace in front of him in here. Um, Vision of Green is going to be a real short price in here. You and know, he was last time. He was last <laughs> time. I couldn't find much excuse there last time out. Could no. you? It was a slow yeah. pace. He was close to the slow pace. It wasn't like he was, you know, uh, I just thought that he was well positioned throughout and he just could not seal the deal behind Harbor Breeze. He was 60 cents to the dollar. He's going to be a short price favorite today at seven to five. I respect the Damon Dilla DeVico barn, and I think they do a great job, but I just can't take this horse at 75. Late scratch just in in that race, number six, Flash Heart just in. Thanks, to TV uh, guys in the trailer. Six races, six, Flash Heart at 30 to one shot. Probably no factor in the handicapping for you, mm -hmm. I would assume. Yeah, nope, I didn't use that okay. horse, so mm -hmm. just going to be using the one, five, and the eight. I will use the eight vision of green protectively there in terms of the pick six. You don't want to get beat by a seven to five shot, um, but yeah, going to be using some coverage there. Yeah, don't the overlook the fact that over the speed limit, the five is first time gelding, mm -hmm. too, as well. Right. Um, Best that angle in the books. That, uh, that's going to be a late announcement, so I might as well go ahead and give that to you now. That is the first time gelding for the, for the five. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you, Dave. As we get to the seventh race, this does start the final pick four of the day. Heading out to the Dahlia Rail, setting at 52 feet, a mile and a 16th. Um, for this maiden special weight event, make the rider Victor Carrasco on the two, Julia's Town and Yomar Torres on the six, Baltimore Beauty. Have a scratch the seven, War Baby, but we'll take a look at She's Like the Wind. This was two starts back, so actually, this three-year-old filly. This is when she was two. Take a look at her. She's the number 11 here. Chubby Star actually was number 10. We'll get to her. We'll talk about her momentarily, but... <laughs> This filly looked a little bit headstrong and rank going into the first turn, giving the rider, Brian Perdosa, a bit of a tough time in relaxing her and saving ground. So she was caught incredibly wide going into the first turn. And then eventually he kind of managed to save some ground, but still she was wide throughout, lost a bit of ground there. And uh, eventually we will show the stretch run. I thought she looked a, a little bit green. Um, yeah, here we go. Um, if we could show, we'll show the, you the stretch run here. She's kind of, I believe she's down uh, on the inside. She makes the lead at the eighth pole. There she's exactly. circled. Exactly. Uh -huh. It looks like she's kind of swapping leads, a little bit green. Um, 
And then we see Chubby Star with a nice move towards her outside. But I thought she was tenacious down on the inside. She just kept on fighting back, fighting back to the finish line. And we're talking about uh, Philly and Chubby Star who came back to run second against the boys and the Jimmy Murphy on Preakness weekend. Mm, against Yoshida, yeah. And, uh, and uh, recent uh, fourth at Churchill Downs in the regret. So, yeah, the class is there from that running line which was the race before the layoff. Mm -hmm. Now, what happened last time? That's the question, Gabby. She didn't like the softer turf. Yeah. That's the only you thing know, I can that's say. That's one excuse. Yep. Yeah. There we go. Can't say she didn't like the outside because she uh, she had post 10s from there. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, maybe a little tighter today. There's always, always an excuse, uh, you know, when you're coming off a, off a time away from the races. Exactly. But if you look at that race, if you look at the maiden special weight she comes out of, two starts back, and even the sprint race at Belmont going against Lowell, who uh, is a pretty nice Christophe Clement filly. W I think if you compare the class there against what the race at West Coast Bias or, or the races that West Coast Bias is coming out of, I think they're a little bit tougher. But like you said, what happened during the layoff? Is she the same filly that we saw at two? Whereas West Coast Bias, she's sitting on a good performance. There's no knocks against her. I'm just mm. not crazy about her. Yeah, perhaps a little more tactical speed from West Coast Bias if she runs like she did last time out. Mm -hmm. Debut runner in here from the Shug Barn. It's uh, in the lee, Tappet Philly. Mm -hmm. Out of uh, grade three winner. Quiet Harbor. Yep. So right away, if you're a pedigree person, uh, you would have to probably use her on the ticket or use, use her in your gimmicks, right? The only issue with her um, is that, yes, she is out of Quiet Harbor, who is a pretty nice horse, but she's also kin to Orient Harbor, who it took her a long time to break her maiden, maybe five or six starts, I believe. So... You know, Shug doesn't always ramp them up to go first, ti first time out. Um, s usually we see them pop off second, third start. So that's where I was a, a little bit lukewarm on her, but she definitely does have a very nice pedigree mm. to showcase. And the Shug first time stats, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, very, very light on the wins mm -hmm. uh, on debut run, the in the lead there for the Stuart Johnny Barn of those familiar red colors, red and white colors. All right, we'll get to the eighth race on the card. We head out to the All Along, a mile and a sixteenth for this first level allowance. Scratch the two, La La Bamba. I liked her. The five, OKK, um, is one, and I believe we wanted to show a video spotlight replay two starts back. Just to, I th thought that this was an OK performance by her, this three-year-old filly by English Channel for trainer Jane Sabelli, and it was an okay race, too. Now, she did come back to be the beaten favorite in an A other than at Mammoth last time out, um, but I think she's worthy of using in here. Yeah, she's worthy of using. I'm a little bit concerned about that last running line when she was beaten favorite, you know, just kind of mm -hmm. followed horse around the track the whole way and the evenly on the short line comment for, for the English Channel filly here, uh, okay, Okay, good effort there. Running second right there on the line at Gulfstream from April 16th. But then you look at other horses that she's facing today. I thought that, like, from a quality perspective, I thought that race at Gulfstream was pretty good. Last time out at Mammoth, it was okay. You look at a horse like maybe the one Shirley's Curls, who I think is good, but she's been facing restricted Maryland bread company in the past couple of starts. So I think she finds a manageable field he here today. Mm, she may not have it. Uh, torrential pace uh, to run to today with a big duel up front. I mean, she uh, she uh, was uh, she won two of her last three in mm -hmm. her most recent kind of an improvement at eight to one, a slight improvement in the buyer numbers. But she's traditionally a horse that maybe gets a little far behind double digits, and with this uh, shorter field of seven here today, may not have the pace to run to. Uh, first time on the turf for Tickle Pink. They tried to get her on the grass there at Belmont. They kept her in the race anyway in a three-horse field. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she was second in a three-horse field, but the winner won by 29 and three-quarters lengths. Uh, you Phil can't George really F. would have called that margin, by the way. Uh, 29 and three-quarters. You, yeah. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. You can't really base your opinion off of that. Uh, you have to kind of dive into the pedigree. I mean, she was a $250,000 purchase, and I'm not saying she can't win in here, but maybe she just hasn't panned out quite the way sh they wanted her to. I have to danza. Mm -hmm. Does that scream turf? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, you know, that uh, they tried to get her on the grass. So Graham thinks she's got that turf foot shackled for Philly there, uh, tickled pink. And Graham, we trust, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll get to the ninth race as we're running out of time here. The first half of the late daily double, five and a half furlongs on the turf. 
uh, on the Dahlia rail setting once again at 52 feet. 16,000 on winners of two. We've got big air from the inside. He should be able to show speed from the rail. We've got several others in here like the 10 split who comes from off of the pace i thought i had a little bit of a tough time with with this race we also have the seven oyster soup who's been running good enough numbers but is he going to be okay turning back in distance i ultimately landed on the six mar vista miguel for jane sabelli by majestic perfection love that turf sprint pedigree and out of a belong to me mare Taking a shot here with Victor Carrasco in the saddle. Take out the five craft. He stayed in for a main track only in the ninth. I think you've got the right horse. I mean, I told you earlier, maybe you couldn't find a single here. But this is the first time in Sibeli's barn. Majestic perfection, turf, damn Debbie's assault. Makes it a half to Cartoon, mm -hmm. who was two for seven on the grass with an 86 uh, buyer figure. So I think there's some turf pedigree here for the first time grass runner, Marvista Miguel. I like the way you say it a little bit better. Oh, <laughs> practice. <laughs> Mar Vista Mar Miguel. Vista Miguel. Uh, yeah, but I mean, Big Air, I, I was trying to consider using. He just has that go whoa type of running style that I, I just don't know if you have a lot of confidence in. Um, but if he gets out to the front end and he can maybe slow things down, maybe he could wire the field if others don't show up. I don't have a lot of confidence in Oyster Soup cutting back in distance. Split can win. He doesn't always like to do that, starting to rack up those defeats, just one for 14 on form. So that's why I just wanted a little bit of a new face in here. Yeah, uh, the new face is the way to go. Oyster Soup's coming off the layoff. Split, I mean, that was a great effort last time. But he's mm -hmm. a, you know, it just seems to to close a little bit too little, a little bit too late. But he's got, had some good turf races here at Laurel against No Knock Raid, only beaten five lengths against Spindall. That was a good effort, mm -hmm. uh, too. And Alex Cintron will take the reins for Sheldon Russell, who's off today for the Kenny Cox runner split in the ninth race. Okay, we'll get to the tenth and final five and a half furlongs on the main track for this maiden $10,000 race. We've got a couple of scratches in here. We'll let you mention them mm -hmm. uh, momentarily. Yeah. But the seven, Madame Alex for... Uh, now uh, written by Fergal Lynch in here, I thought definitely has the opportunity to move forward, not only with a drop in class, but an okay performance in debut coming out of that maiden $25,000 event in for the 10000 today. Well, Ozala certainly had a lot of chances, and he's 5-2. Mm -hmm. to two. She's 5-2 to two on the morning line. Whether um, she's had her chances on, on the on the dirt many times just not a lot of follow through there yep. for in that last 16th of a mile for Wazala so I can see you going another way here and that's uh, Milan Milosevic does a great job is looking for his uh, first uh, win I believe in his career for Ma for Madam Alex but you know she's first time on the grass not for love I include Mayor I can see uh, you know I can see her winning Mm -hmm. And we also have maybe the four Street Ranger who debuted on the turf, now trying the dirt for the first time. We've got the 11 Tootsie on a roll from the outside uh, for trainer Jamie Ness uh, coming out of a race, though, where she was the beaten favorite at Tampa. So there's a couple ways to go in here. I don't think you necessarily have to land on Wazala, who's had her fair chances. Kind of a race maybe for a bit of a price. Yep. Can I give you one little stat? Yeah, go that for might, it. That might I like it. Rock somebody's world in the <laughs> in the Rock final my leg. world, Dave. Go okay. for it. S uh, trainer Carlin Tapscott. Uh -huh. Return on investment. The last five years, positive. She's won with a 60 to 1 shot, a 39 to 1 shot, a 51 to 1 shot, and an 8 to 1 shot. And that could rock your pick five ticket. Number five. She'd Num be sassy. Not saying she's going to win, but I'm just saying, you know, look at the past history in a race like this. Anything can a happen. Anything could happen, yeah. All right, I like it. Thanks. You ri you rocked my world. <laughs> okay. I'm going to start <laughs> singing that song. Anyway. Uh, there's a lot of song <laughs> horses today. <laughs> there I, are. I've noted. You're lucky I, I didn't break out in a couple of tunes. You might this afternoon, though. I'm looking forward to some of your race calls this <laughs> afternoon. Always take that creative approach. But thank you for everybody for tuning in for today at the races on this Friday afternoon. We will step aside, but Dave Rodman will be up next and shortly with those scratches and changes. She's Best like the wind. Christopher Cross, right? Like the wind. She's Night like the Oh, yeah. my gosh. Right. I need to stop. It's not karaoke hour. <laughs> Have, Have a good, good day, day and best of luck.